Let's get deeper and deeper and deeper into the animation and in the tools that Maya offers that they are based in the old days of animation. So this is, this is what the technology meets the traditional way of doing things and, and this is again why Maya has been taking things from different artists, in this case animation, so they, 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 they see the way and the workflows that they were developing at Disney and then they would just rebrand those tools in an electronic format that we're gonna see those things now. Okay, so let's go through the egg sheets, animation curves, motion trails, and the timeline, how everything changes now in the electronic format. So now I have my scene that I was animating on the previous video here, that I previously animated. And there's things that, I, that, that we need to start identifying. And you have seen me doing things in Maya now that makes sense to you. But let me just backtrack a little bit so we can make more sense of these ones. First of all, the, uh, the timeline, we have down here, we have the frames as we have seen, but this is pretty much going, uh, we can see the past and we can see the future. So going forward, we're seeing the future and then we go backwards and we see the past of the animation. Remember the trick of these things is to animate in a way that we can visualize things frame by frame, but also with our imagination, seeing things and imagining how would this be if I do this? How would this be if I do that? So when we see it playing forward, we just are pretty close to what we imagined. That's a, that's a goal and that's something that's not easy at the beginning, but you're gonna see that's easier and easier. So let's do more stuff here. If I expand my timeline, I can see more frames right there. I can have 48 frames that I know based on experience that that's two seconds because it's 24 frames is one second 48 frames is two seconds and uh, to manipulate this timeline we can go we have four things here we have one two three four fields so we can say okay the animation I want this to be uh, let's say one second so we go and say 24 frames and this is how the timeline now just gets it's smaller if I go and then move it with this one 12 frames it's going to show me just those 12 frames but then the animation length is going to be 48 or 24 frames depending on the uh, the number that we enter here which is 24 frames and then this one we just uh, select more frames uh, this is pretty self-explanatory the uh, the uh, the change here is that uh, this would be also what we call an X sheet, an exposure sheet. And let me just go back to the, 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 uh, the four viewports right there and bring something up here for you. Right there. This, in the old days, we, we used to use this one. And there's still people that use it. When we came into computer animation, we imported these tools and it's important that we keep uh, them going. Although, I need to be honest, um, this tool of, uh, of, uh, of planning, it, it has been left behind slowly, uh, especially with computer animation because of a, a number of, of things. But the most important one is that because computers are being faster now, we can do a lot of uh, trial and error, meaning that we can try something out, play it, try something out, play it, adjust it, and then keep on going. In the old days, it was like, try something out, and it's really expensive to see it because they needed to go through the pencil tests and then through film, and then spending more money until they see it. And then once they see it, they're like, ah, it's not what I wanted. So now going through the process would be really expensive for the studio. So let's go to this one. This is the, the egg sheet, and I'll explain it briefly. Uh, I will zoom in here and let's see bookmarks. How can I zoom in like that? So basically what we have 
I'm just gonna draw on the screen like that so you can see. We have the animator, in this case would be Mario. Uh, and this, this would be a printed sheet that we get on our desks. Production would be, uh, it would be uh, demo, like school demo or something like that. Right there, the scene number, the notes, sequence length, in this case, let's go and it'll be 48 frames. Sheet number, this would be like one out of four maybe, depending how long the scene would be. Having this, then we start planning the action. If he has any dialogue, would be illustrated right there. You're gonna have the, uh, the voices maybe right there that it says, uh, hello, so this would be like, hello. And then we just break it in phone as you more on that later on. But for now, this would be the exit. We have the frame numbers, and then we say so the action would be something like uh, uh, let, let me actually do one change here. If I take this out, let's say there's no sound for now. But what we can have it is the same scene. So we say uh, because I remember uh, ball goes down in two frames so we say sorry cube drops so this would be my notes in 12 frames that's right there and then here in uh, frame 13 I have my breakdown pose which is that one and then it goes up and then bounces again so this is uh, goes uh, up so this is all my planning and then this one would be just uh, settles uh, right there so the cube settles down right here and then let's say that's my frame uh, 28 and my keyframes right there so I would indicate my keyframes I know that I have one in 12 uh, 13 would be the breakdown and I have one somewhere in 17 I can actually move the uh, this one up right there yeah so the other one was in frame 24 so this is the old days and we should go and do this before we actually start the animation so this is all the planning from those days Today we have different ways of planning things, but we use this one and you're gonna find that uh, if you run into more classical animation teachers and people, they have this background. This is how they do it. Um, <clears throat> new, newer animators, they go straight to the computer and they use it in a different way. So it's interesting. So you can take your, your pick right there. Uh, levels would be more animation um, layers. Let's say if we have a body, we can have body would be uh, one layer and then an arm would be a different layer. So we can hold the body and stays there and we just animate the arm, you know, just like the Flintstones, um, Family Guy, those type of shows are based with layer animation and nowadays with, with flash animation. So this dope shit, what's, what's happening here is that uh, if I erase that, and uh, here, if I rotate this like that, what's interesting is that now this starts on frame one right there and just keeps on going to frame 50. That in the dope sheet, it is this in Maya. And this is where things are, are again, uh, technology, technology is just rebranding the old traditional tools and then bringing them into the new tools, which is this one. And then every single frame or keyframe or indication, we have a keyframe right there, we have a keyframe right there. You're gonna find them here in the timeline. So that's, that's how and why this has been laid out like that. But then every time you see a keyframe right there, this would be that keyframe. So we have a, a, a mini exposure sheet and again we just write that down this is the exposure sheet uh, so that we have down here it's a, it's like a mini exposure sheet because you have a lot of that uh, functionality but you don't have full functionality yet we have some things only because it's right there with the timeline but it's pretty it's pretty uh, interesting to see how they they translated this all tools with the new ones okay so let's move on to the more complex sheet right here go to Maya and uh, I like to switch it to the viewport that has uh, on the layout it's on the layout right there it, it has three channels right here and uh, it's giving you the hypergraph which it's good because it's a window that is not 
having any information on the cube or it's not displaying the same as this one so it's going to play faster in a way or it's going to respond better uh, in this case just the cube if i go let me just go to the exit right there now also the egg sheet it was called uh, the dope sheet uh, like that dope uh, sheet like that so this is another name for the same idea now what I have here this would be a complete uh, exposure sheet right there I can keep on expanding things right there and you, you're gonna find channels now if I go back to my dope sheet and we compare them both you can see that this was more uh, closer to that uh, the old X sheet right there and again it has more functionality now we can move things independently it's showing it's showing us all these different layers and we can move them around as if we were moving them here now although there it had it, it had to be with pencil and the eraser but here we can just grab those keyframes and say okay let's move them like that so dope sheet would be something that we can retime things let's say that break them pose here in the frame 13 i can move it either by going here uh, sorry selecting that one and then moving it to the right and you can see that it moves down there on the frame 14 or if i undo that i can do it on the mini dope sheet here and what i am doing i am pressing shift left click turns to red and now i can move it uh, i can do that for one frame or i can do it for the whole sequence holding shift down and opening with my left mouse button opening that and then just moving them up like that uh, or i can undo that and i can do uh, scaling them up like that you can see how it changes and then you can also see the interaction on the cube right there which is really 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 nice because in the old days uh when i was animating with you know with the dope sheet and then with drawing and paper you would not be able to see something like that so this is why we um, animators can get faster results and we can be more accurate by playing something making adjustments and seeing the result on the screen it's amazing it's really nice Alrighty, so that dope sheets and uh, the time slider. Let's let's move on to one thing that that computer animation introduced, and that's animation curves. I will be switching to the animation curves by going to the spacebar, uh, hotbox, and then go go south and then choose the graph editor. You can also access that by going here, window, animation editors, and then go, go to that one, which is the same window as this one. Now, what that is doing is that it's bringing a different uh, way of visualizing movement. I have every single channel right there. We have translation, three axis, rotation, three axis, and scale on the three axis. So now that the uh, cube is going down, I know that that axis is going down that's why if you have any doubt for that just press the w key which turns on the manipulation mode and you can see the axis right there um, and it's the green one right there and that would be the one that belongs either by color you can find it or by uh, the manipulator uh, type right there and you can see that there is some motion uh, if i zoom in right there i can frame it with the f key remember that's a pretty standard key in maya and I can see that there's some motion. If I grab any of these key points that are related to the key frames and I move them, you can see that things are happening on the cube. If I want the cube to go faster or be closer to the screen, I just move it down and it's there. So now it's gonna play like that. If I go up, it's gonna keep on going up. If I zoom out, I can see that it's gonna get farther away from the floor and now it's going to drop like that if i see that scale that is happening i can do it right here also on the curves and it, on the curve it's pretty much indicating that there's some motion uh, for now it is not about the animation but it's about more understanding what we see on the screen when you see something flat like that it pretty much means that there's it, nothing's happening it's it's a flat line nothing happens 
uh, there's no motion at all meaning that the scale on that curve which is the scale on the x-axis nothing's happening when it gets to frame 12 and 13 now something's happening the value it is changing you can see it right here going like that that is the value that is what's changing and uh, you can see the other one right there uh, one thing that is really handy in Maya and in, in any other application program is that we have what is called the buffer curves we go here view buffer curves and uh, if we make any changes right here we can see that there's a ghosted line right there so we can compare before and after to make changes and we can just revert those changes by flipping uh, between them uh, so again just understand the ability to see motion through some curves and this is the animation curves um, if this is your first time of, of, of seeing something like this it might be really uh, intimidating but the idea by looking at these curves is that it's just like the musician can see the uh, the score sheet and then he can see some music if, if, you know the music going down tempo and things like that we in animation we can, we can see whatever is being keyframed we can see that motion and the easiest the easiest one to uh, to identify always is the one in the y-axis because it's always going up and down if it goes below the ground you can see that line right there uh, we can let me show you this would be that coordinate uh, let me make it smaller sorry so this would be coordinate o o o zero 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 which is the same as this one right there so this is that um, so the y-axis here if I go to this one right there I can see that on that frame I have on the channel box it says 0.515 so let me just make those comparison this one would be the same as this one right there so they, they, they communicate going from there to here and uh, of course to this one so that is the key point that we have selected you have the value and you can see it in different ways if i go below the ground right here if i go minus or negative it's going to go below the ground because now we're going below that floor right there and uh, you can see it also uh, let me just go back to this you can see it right there below the ground so again um, the animation curves are showing you <clears throat> a different representation of motion let me just do uh, try to fix one thing or to adjust one thing so you can see how you can get it going i will undo that so it goes above the ground and uh, by breakdown pose here right there that it, it is it is bouncing and it's going up and if i want this not to be going below the ground like there's that little portion of the cube that is going below the ground I can fix it by going to the uh, Y curve and I can see it right there if I if I really 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 zoom in we can see it right here that uh, this is above the ground but if I keep on drawing that line now this this is below the ground so we can fix that so this is below whoop like that so i can i can do it by grabbing those handles and then going like that and then i, I, I adjust the curve i can do it by doing that i have some settings right here that i can flat them out like that so it, it's just faster if instead of me moving this like that i just go and say just make it flat and there's some settings right there that uh we, we will be going through those ones for now just understand the concept of uh, visualizing this so just by by doing these little changes adjustments you can see how it goes above the ground so that would be one thing let me show you more stuff about the the um, the curves that is really handy we have uh, the flat tangents every single thing that, that I'm doing here that moving this would be with the same um, manipulator modes if you want to move it would be the W key if you want to scale it would be the uh, the R key uh, and so on if I want to scale them all like that I just go like here and then the R key and I can scale that like this 
and uh, if I want to slow out I can also do this look at that the cube instead of going straight down is gonna go up and then go down because I'm telling him to go over that value and then go down like so so animation curves are really handy uh, with, with every assignment you're gonna get more comfortable and then you can see the curves and you can feel you know that confidence of what's going on so don't don't rush or don't despair if you are not really uh, understanding that or, or it's, it's intimidating just just get to know now the, uh, the the purpose of these things so let's go through the most common options and settings we use in the curves again all this is for animation uh, the first one that, that we're using quite often is the uh, this one's right there and uh, these these are things that you can set on the preferences as well every time you're setting a keyframe it sets them in that particular way so let's just try to see how they they uh, they work um, some of them uh, might not be as you know as, as obvious but uh, as you are getting to know the switches you'll understand this better so the first one would be this one the flat tangents uh, let me just go back, back one uh, step and then this would be tangents right there uh, pretty much because they are going along the tangent they're just traveling along the tangent so you can you can manipulate those tangents like that this switch would be flat tangents and if you're unsure of what it means you can just go like that just hover that and then down on the screen down here you're gonna find the uh, what it means so always pay attention to that because Maya is talking to you so I can just cover that and you can see what they are so this is flat tangents you can do it for one of the key points or you can grab them all like opening like that or just grabbing any portion of the curve that has no keyframes or key points and then it's just gonna grab the whole thing and you can flat flat all the tangents uh, the other one would be linear that makes it more with lines which means that that pretty much means uh, linear would be something that that is more electronic let's say um, an elevator door that opens like that uh, maybe my chair if I can go up and down as well it, like electronic cars and those things there's no organic feeling and this would be something for linear uh, the other one would be uh, this one right there would be the one that uh, it, it maintains when it finds curves uh, they need to be uh, ongoing like that you can see it's a con it's a continuous line that it just tries it's actually trying to balance out comparing the key point from before and the key point after so it actually balances them, them out and then this one would be spline uh, completely completely um, continuous lines so you can see there's so, sometimes they change depending on the angles sometimes it's really hard to see what they do but uh, I, I usually keep them flat like that and then I go in and then try to see which ones are the obvious ones like if I zoom in right there grabbing that key point pressing the F key like this one there's no reason for it to be flat so I just gonna make it continuous and that's how I keep on refining the animation uh, again for this one I can go and, and do it like that and if, if for any reason it's going below the value I can just readjust it so these ones are pretty common uh, the buffer curves would be uh, these two icons right there it's pretty much for swapping those curves and it's what I showed you before for that you need to activate it you go show buffer curves like that and every time you move the key point it is going to show you that line um, in the new Maya 2011 you can barely see it it's almost the same color as the background so that has to be changed in the preferences but you know you can you can see it like once you know that it's there it is there uh, in the previous Maya it was more uh, clear so I, I, I can swap back and forth between those two by clicking the icon on the right uh, the icon on the left is it is actually if you want to take a snapshot of that curve so it's going to take the buffer curve and convert it now into it'll be the point a i guess so let me just do it if i 
go and you, you can see the buffer curve and if I take a snapshot like that, the buffer curve is going to go away and it's going to take whatever the value of the curve would, would be, that would be the new departing point. Uh, the other ones are to release the tangents, those ones right there. These ones, it's pretty much to play with the continuity of the tangents. Uh, what, that, what that means basically is that when I'm moving this one like that, I am just moving the one on the right, but then the left one, it's balancing out, so I can break them by grabbing that and I can just move one. I can keep them continuous one more time. And then this one and that one, if you press them right away, you can get an error on Maya saying that there's no weight on the curves. You need to activate one of the switches. And for that would be, you can grab either just one key point or grabbing the whole curve. I'm just gonna grab the entire curve and then go to the curves menu. And then all the way at the bottom, it says weighted tangents. And what that pretty much is doing is that it's, it's going to give you the freedom to do whatever you want. Isn't that cool? So you can go like this, weighted tangents, click on that one. You're gonna see that the icon changes. Now it's, it's, it's different. It's, it's a bit longer and it has a solid uh, point right there. Uh, so now I can go and, and, and click on this one saying free the weights so I can free it. And what, it, what that's gonna be doing is that now I can grow these things as far as I want. Let me grab one curve that it doesn't have the, the, weighted, the weighted tangent so you can see the difference. If I go to the scale uh, like this one, this one's the same as before. It does not have the weighted, weighted tangents. So this one, if I try to grab it and stretch it, I can't do it because Maya is limiting that information. So if I go back to my other one, this one I can, so I can go like that. And it's really useful. This is the way I animate, so I try to have that weighted, weighted tangent always on. And of course you can break it and then do crazy things like that for the animation, it saves you keyframes, and it allows you to see also uh, different results in the screen. Although you have to be really careful because having something like that can, can, can also get uh, really uh, complicated and confusing uh, because it's pretty much like handling spaghetti. You know, you have a lot of things happening and, and it, you have to go through this trance of spaghetti, just trying to see what's happening here, what's happening there, because now everything everything is free. So I recommend you start with the other ones and then slowly just shift your way into the weighted tangents and you're taking more control over it. But if you can let Maya help you at the beginning, that would be uh, my recommendation. So let's see, let's keep on going. These ones right there, we don't really use them as much. Um, I have used these ones in special uh, projects, actually, sorry, that's the ones uh, here. And, and those ones would be more for no normalizing the weights. And I have used them, uh, I think once or twice in about 10 years. Um, and it's basically, it was a scene from a movie that it was a flying camera from outside the plan planet Earth. So it was really far, it was a big, big scene in Maya. So what, what that's doing is pretty much just bringing the values and normalizing the values. Instead of having from number one to one billion, it's always from zero to one. So it just lets you play with less values just to make it easier. And then I, I skipped these ones um, mainly because uh, we use them quite often and then you, you touch it once and then that's it. You're not really playing with those as much. But it's pretty much, if you move these uh, points, uh, let me go back to Maya here. If you move these points, um, they actually snap on the, uh, on, the, on the frame. So this one's snapping on that frame. Uh, this one would be, would be snapping vertically. So now you can see how the curve, instead of moving smoothly, it just jumps because now it's uh, snapping. So we, we use the, the one that is snapping vertically because you want to have always the same frame. You don't want to go over like that because it's, it just gets too confusing and you're, you're breaking the animation. And then the other one, this one's, this one's just to refresh the, the screen uh, every time. So just keep it, keep it on and then that's it. The other menus are pretty much menus that you're going to find 
uh, the same icons would be there. This one you have the linear is there. And then the other ones would be for breaking the tangent. So every single icon you have a menu. And that is pretty much it. We, we, we will be getting deeper and deeper into this depending on the, uh, on the assignments. But for now, again, just understand the concept and try to see what we can do with these things. And um, if there's a need to jump and do or use any of these tools, you will go ahead and do it and you're gonna see and understand it even better. Um, okay, so now let's move on to motion trails. We'll be talking about motion trails. Motion trails, it's one of my favorite tools of Maya because it brings the old classical tools into the new 3D world. And I will show you what I mean. I will open uh, Toon Boom, which is a classical animation program, and I'll just draw a couple of things here. If I was, let me just get one frame going right there and uh, draw like that, just so I can test it. If I, if I was animating that cube dropping classically, I would do my layout right here. I would probably just have a couple of lines right there just indicating the floor uh, like so with the vanishing points like that and then I would just have a layout of the motion that we call the path of action that path of action it actually indicates what we're going to do so the path of action for this one would be it, it goes down and uh, it doesn't move anywhere but it just bounces up and then bounces down like that almost in the same place and as simple as that now on that path of action i would have my timing which would be uh, something like it's slowing out and then here it just goes to the last frame it it, uh, it hits the ground and then goes up this one slows in slows out and then settles down right there that would be my path of action i can have any path of action that i want um, any anything that i can pretty much like imagine and would be based in the animation on that paths of action could be for anything that is moving it could be eyes could be the, com the complete arm could be my hips could be the whole body going to one side so that is a path of action and if i jump now to maya i would see that path of action here in the scene now i i i, I don't see it because everything was planned without that path of action but now i can tell maya show me that path of action so the steps that i need to do here is that i need to grab the object that i want and then go to the menu animate and then go to create motion trail if i create that motion trail now i can see that there's numbers right there and uh, the whole thing is not really showing up it's just stuck somehow it says 44 to 69 so let me see what's going on with that uh, I will delete that by grabbing it and then just deleting that and then going into the settings and this is pretty common for the first time you, you are building the scene uh, things that I need to know is that my scene goes from frame 1 to frame 24 that I need to know now go to the motion trail options here and uh, scene that has different things right there so the first thing to do always when you are using any of these tools go to the edit reset settings and that's just going to take it back to the factory settings and this is what we want uh, so again just go with time range time slider so this one this option is going to be looking at this and that number like that so this is pretty handy because we can set numbers down below and we can change them and then this is always going to be looking into that um, then the uh, increment every single frame we want to have that then the, uh, the fast update use this one and then we want to have points and um, there's there's different styles that i will take you through i have my preference but you guys should also pick your own so let's just leave it like that for now create that motion trail here and now we can see that uh, it is showing us all these numbers and every number it represents one frame so we have frame one two three four five i keep going down all the way to the last frame right there that is frame 24 like that so let me go back to the options so i can do something different 
delete that and then go back to those options. I can actually leave them out. And then the one that I like is that I use the line so I can see that connection between the frames. And I usually don't do the complete animation. I just do the section that I want. So let's say from frame one to 12. So I go and say this. Actually, I can do it like that. Show me from one to 12. Create that motion trail. And now I will see my line same as what I had in Toon Boom. If I go back to Toon Boom, I can see that line and I can see my frames. Now, one thing that I have here in my frames and my timing is that uh, I have, this is uh, slowing out. You can see how these lines really close this one and that one's really close. And then the increment just gets bigger, bigger like that. And then what I have in Maya, it's the same spacing or the same increment or the same distance. That, that is the reason for this one. So we can work in the spacing, we can work also in the, uh, in the uh, uh, trajectory there. So let me work on the spacing right here. Go back to the four, uh, sorry, the three viewport and uh, I can go to the curves right there. And now if I play with my tangents, now you can see how the numbers are, are changing. So what I'm doing there is the spacing. So if I want to have something like Toon Boom right there that is really close at the top, just go like that and make it flat. You can actually make it longer like that and you can see how the cube now takes its time and then drops down. So as gravity is taking over, the cube is going down. So now this shows you that power of the motion trails. My favorite thing with these things is that you're doing things down there and you can see it right away. That's, that's just priceless. It's so nice to have that. Let me save this in and I will show you one more example with, with this. Um, I will go to the frame. Let's see, if I want this thing to bounce and then go forward, I can do a couple of things. So I go first to the frame number one and go to the Z axis and then go like that. And you can see that now that I get a cube like that. So the, the cube is going forward and then it stops and it stays right there. So that is something I don't want that to happen. I want to keep on going forward. So there's no motion here because remember flat means no motion at all. So now what I want is just to keep that motion here. So I can do it in two ways, like the hard way and the easiest way. I'll do it the hard way first so you can see what I mean. I need to keep on going with this and then just kind of like aligning that line all the way here. And as, again, as I'm doing this, now I need to plot the other section of the arc so I can see it or the motion trail. So I will grab this one right there, delete it. Grab now the cube and now say, yes, give me the motion trail for the entire scene right there. So now I see it and go back to the Z axis and keep on moving this one. So now you can see that you move it and then the, the trail updates. So I can, I can line them up and then this is the hard way. So the hard thing is that for me that I need to line the whole thing up. Now the easiest way that it's kind of dangerous, you, you need to know this uh, would be Remember, uh, take a snapshot with the buffer curve. Take it right there, make sure that it's there. So you move, move one point, you see that the curve is there. You're safe, you can always go back. And then I can actually delete these keyframes or key points. Delete them like that and then just move one. Instead of moving forward, we're just taking care of one point and then that one just make it flat like that. Now that I have it like that, it's smoother. Okay, it's only one key point that I'm worrying about. It's not four and it's not having that spaghetti feeling. So now I have it like this and I need to bring those keyframes back so I can keyframe it again with the S key, keyframe it, keyframe it like that. So now you can see that these ones are following that smoothness and I can even grab those two and then click on the uh, continuous line right there. So it's, it smooths them out even more. So now I have shown you the pretty much combination of all the things that we've seen here. So now the cube is moving forward, bounces, bounces up, 
and then one last time. That last bounce, it sounds, or it actually looks very high. So I can go to the curve right there, here. This is the one. Uh, go down, I can have the, uh, it says 15 and 14, so I go to that frame. 14 right there and 15. This is the things that I was making before, so just make it flat and make this one flat and uh, this one might be more continuous like that so now it's not going below the ground so there you are you, you now see the power of the motion trail uh, in combination with the tools so it's pretty much the whole animation polishing right there and if i play the animation right now it might be kind of like a new animation just from dropping straight down now we have something that is moving forward and uh, traveling and bouncing and let me just add one more layer of animation right there so you can see what I mean let's 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 say that uh, I will animate the rotation since I have the keyframes on the curve I can go from 1 to 12 and then move this key point and then seeing how the cube it actually changes and I know that this should be somewhere in 90 degrees so I go and enter that value right here so now the curve is going to rotate as it's falling down. Once it bounces, I can make it go one more turn right there. So I would do the same thing. 90 degrees on this one. So now you can see how this one's bouncing, rotating. My squash is not really helping as much right there. I need to fix it. So I go to the Y curve and then make, make him just go uh, airborne. So it's not really going through the ground right there. And there you are, you see now it's going back to that. So a very simple example right here that is showing the power of uh, the motion trail and the animation curves and the, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, the ability to see these things as you're doing it. Um, we, we need to be very conscious of that. We need to be always planning and trying to achieve what we are planning for because if not we just get happy accidents and it's okay to get them but what the uh, the the negative side of that is that because we can't really get what we want we're relying on the computer to give us some cool ideas and it's not the way we should be doing it instead of relying on the software we should be relying on our creative potential and imagination and then using the tool to get to that point We'll be talking about now about how and it is, it is the integration of the traditional tools into the new technology um, animation tools. I